Hello, my name is Valdez, and I work here at HSDC in Seattle. And I've known this person for a long time. He is a friend of mine. He has taught ASL and recently retired last year, right? His name is Matt Wilson, and I wanted to have a chat with him. I have some questions about deaf history. So, deaf history. Whoa, that is big. There's a lot to say about that. There used to be not much information about that. But they have documented all of this history back to the 1800s, 1700s. They're documenting all this and how it has changed. Well, for me, you know, I've lived a long time. I'm not saying I'm old, but I have had a long life, long enough to know how things used to be and how they are now. Around the 60s, things really changed, around 65, 67. Before that, you know, I was around 10 or 11, TVs had no captioning. None. I just watched, but I had no idea what was happening. It could be anything, whether it was a cartoon. You know, many deaf people have their favorite programs, like the Roadrunner, because there's a lot of action and you aren't missing the story. It is very clear. Like Tom and Jerry, too. Right, exactly. Deaf people love that because it is visual. You do not need to know what is being spoken. There isn't a lot of speaking. However, until about the 70s, there was no captioning. In the 70s, the first captioning was set up. And do you know what the first show was? The Love Boat. Oh, I remember watching that. Oh, yes. It was a little tacky, but there were captions. No, it was good. Oh, my, it was so great. And there were more and more. They had Dynasty. Yes, I remember. Oh, and everyone had to watch. Oh, Knott's Landing. Yes, and Dallas. You know, everything was captioned suddenly and all this information. But before the 60s, there was none. So, whoa, that was a big change. Okay, next, phones. Deaf people couldn't make calls back in the 60s. Before about 65, there was nothing. There was no TTY, nothing. So deaf people had to communicate by driving over and knocking on a person's door so you could let them know someone had passed away or some news or that there was a meeting. And that is why the deaf clubs were so big to exchange information. Everyone would share because there were no phones up until then. Also, if you had a deaf friend, say in California, and had to let them know something, you had to write a letter and mail it all the way to California so they could read it. It would take like a week. Oh boy, a week or sometimes two or three days. And if they were Deciding something time sensitive, like whether they were coming to visit, you would have to plan it three or four months in advance. And if they had to cancel last minute, they couldn't call. They would just wouldn't show up. So you're stuck waiting and wondering. Then they had the TTY. Oh, the old ones were these big, heavy metal machines. Oh, they were huge. But it was better than nothing. So we would call all of our deaf friends. We would just call and call back and forth. It was so great. Then over time, they shrunk down into the modern day TTY. That was probably around the 80s, 80s, when they got small like that. Yeah, something like that. The big old ones we threw out and we had these modern ones, but now we don't use them anymore. There's still a few people that use them. Some deaf people keep them. You know, you, you call 711 and make calls. So some people keep those, but no, they don't really use those much anymore. And now we have the video phones, VPs. We can chat in ASL and see each other. It's visual. I don't have to fly to see you. I can see you on a video. And then there's the interpreter services, video relay service. Oh my goodness. You, you can have a chat with anyone. You could call your doctor or call any hearing person. Oh, today, wow. The technology has just taken off. TTYs, we don't use much anymore. I threw mine away. Times have changed. Wow. Since the 60s, a lot of things have gotten easier. You can text on cell phones. Yes, you, uh, iPhones, iPads, FaceTime. You can choose whatever you want. You can text somebody to let them know that you'll be late. You didn't used to be able to do that. People would be like, why didn't you tell me? I was waiting and waiting. So communication access has increased dramatically. Wow. Is it 100% perfect? 
No, but it really has improved. So then the ADA law was passed. That created improvements as well. Technology has taken off. We have laptops, Zoom, all these visual options. Wow, it's really a big change since before the 60s. Now, before 65, ASL was not recognized as a real language. No, it was just called sign language. That was it. And when they taught signing classes, they just taught words. Word, 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 word. And hearing people would memorize them, and then they signed like it was English. They didn't teach grammar, classifiers, hand shape meanings, none of that. Then ASL was really studied, and they recognized all this language structure. And that was around 1965, and that really influenced everything after that. Also, there were no interpreters way back. You'd have to ask, hey, you have deaf parents. You're a coda. Would you mind doing this for me? Would you do this for me? But now there is RID, and there are, is certification for interpreters. And on top of that, there are certified deaf interpreters now. All these things now that deaf people can do. Wow. Times before and after the 60s. Wow. It makes me think about what the future is going to be like. Back then, we had to accept how things were. That's just how things were. I would not want to go back. Now I think about the future and all the changes you've seen in your lifetime. What new things are going to be in my lifetime? Oh, she's insulting me, saying I'm old-fashioned and can't keep up with technology. Huh, no. I'll be next. The next generation will insult me and call me old-fashioned. <laughs> no. Oh, it's amazing. Deaf history. Well, thank you for your time. I really enjoyed your stories. Things really have changed. <laughs>